doing? How was your day today? It was good. Busy. <laughs> um, a little bit longer with that rain we had, but uh, oh. yeah, it was good. How about yeah, you? I was just saying I was cleaning up, doing. <laughs> I was so interested in that. So, oh, anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now call me old. I'm old. It's okay. I like being mature. I embrace my age. I'm about to be 50 in January. Ah. <laughs> a trill one. Mm-hmm. What's that? I've heard it. What's a trill one? I think did I you... looked it up, but I still wasn't clear. No, that's fine. Um, okay. So did you ever watch the show, the game? That came on the CW and UPN. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. know Tasha Mack. How she was always about that life. You know that was her whole thing. I'm about that life. Mm-hmm. That's a true one. Um, like because the question is, who's the true one, right? Is it right. person? Is a toy? Is a thing? Who is really about that life? And you'll see, you'll see by the time we get to the book, I think in book one, the readers may think they know who, you know, caught up loving the trail one, who's the real one This uh, about this life, who is, you know, about this business, about the streets, about, you know, all of that. And you'll know by the end of the book, but it's not who you think it is in book one. Okay. So and now I've said this in my reviews now. I said this in my reviews. I'm more and more starting to believe the trill one is toy and not, um, you know, you would assume that it would be Tyson because he was mm-hmm. in the business. Yeah. But yeah, she been doing it for a is, while. Mm-hmm. and been doing it for a while successfully and quietly yeah. so much that his wife didn't know he was still doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she the come in there and she like, take yeah. over like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, she comes in and she's like Queen of the South. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you've ever seen that um, show on Netflix, Queen of the South, she's oh, yeah. Queen of the South. Teresa Mendoza. So yeah. um, she coming in and I said, well, maybe Tyson's the one, maybe Snake's the one loving the trill one. We don't know. Right. We're going to find out. Mm-hmm. So it's like, mm hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so that is it's very interesting toy is really showing that she knows what she's doing i mean like okay not in the questions but i have to say when they met with rock mm-hmm. and she was she called out i you think we all do you think you only had those two boys in the in the truck mm-hmm. what about the ones over there I was like whoa yeah whoa wait a minute how did she see that she got bionic hearing yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I know if Saint didn't like her before, yeah. he really liked her now. Yeah, the trip she to did Alabama that? was a turning point for him. So yeah. Yes. Definitely. That yeah. was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. She ain't this little innocent just I'm doing something for my husband right now. She mm-hmm. he got this. And it, and it really, it just comes from her being a mom and being having yeah. to keep her ears out for the kid. Yep. I tell you, mm, 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 mm. I love that part. I love that part. <laughs> and I know Saint did too. Anyway, okay, going on. Okay, say um, there is a new person that wants to write. They are writers and they haven't published. What would be your advice to a new writer? or um, that's looking to get published? So one thing I say about trying to get published, you have to find a publisher that suits you. Um, that Because it, it's a working relationship. Um, mm-hmm. My publisher is, man, he, like, I'll have an idea in my head. And I think I know what I'm doing, right? And I'm like, I've written 12 books and, and you know, I know what I'm doing, right? Okay, mm-hmm. I've written 12 books. This man has been doing this for over 20 years. He knows what he's doing. I had a concept and I went to him and I just knew that it was perfect. And I was like, this is, because honestly, book four was supposed to be a spinoff. Book four was not supposed to be Caught Up Loving the Trill 1-4. It was going to have a different title. It was going to be a standalone spinoff. 
um, about 80,000 wow. words, and it was dealing with faint and toy, but it's also bringing in some characters from another stories that I had. And so I went to my publisher and was like, yeah, here's what I started writing, and here's what I'm going to do, and I'm 40,000 words in, and this and the third. He's like, no, and here's why. And he said, you don't want to do a spinoff where readers have to have read six other books to get to this book. He's like, because then when it comes out in the sales, like the readership is going to be delayed because, you know, they got to go back and read all these books. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. So you really need to, mm. you need to do your research on finding a publisher and find one that has been around for a while or has had success. Because if they don't have the blueprint themselves, they can't help you. Um, Cole has the blueprint. <laughs> so Cole helps me. <laughs> you know, I have my little ideas and, um, we think a lot alike. I think the only thing sometimes is I, I think he hates talking to me when it's time to title the book because I'm like, mm -hmm. mm, I don't like that. I know when we were titling the first series, it took about 45 minutes back and forth on the phone. I know I was getting on his nerves, but, you know, we work well together because, you mm -hmm. know, I have to talk to him a lot. And, and he's got great ideas. And when I'm stuck on something, like he wanted to uh, pair me on a project and I was like, oh, I have a plot right now. I can't do that, but I can do this. And he just works with me and it's just a really good working relationship. So from that, looking for a publisher, I would say, do your research, find one that has achieved success, either themselves personally, because he's done it as an author, but also with his team. His team is strong. Um, so he's got the blueprint and he can, you know, help an author build a career. But while they're working on their, you know, their written work, um, I would say you have to be confident in your writing, but you also have to be open and receptive to feedback. Um, because again, if you're partnered with someone, whether it's your publisher or whether it's, you know, a peer in the industry, um, nobody's out, well, Okay, everybody doesn't have good intentions, so let me stop there. But if you're working with people that you trust, the things that they're telling you are for your benefit, right? And, you know, I've gotten mm -hmm. some feedback. Um, my first book was almost 90,000 words long. And I had a lot of feedback on the length of it, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking at some of the reviews, and I'm like, okay, okay, I can see that. And what that did, that helped me with pacing and hooking the mm. readers early on. And that's information I got from my publisher, from the test readers that he has, and from some of the readers. Um, one thing Cole also told me was, when your book comes out, read the first 20 reviews and that's it. Don't sit here and get hung up on the reviews. Like some people are just mean spirit descendants. Or he said, after the first 20 reviews, you have a good idea of what's going on and what you need to improve on. I said, okay, for me, it was the length. And so one thing that mm -hmm. I picked up, going back to how this book starts, I started it that way by design. When you get to the end of that first chapter, you're like, what the heck is going on? Isn't that what happened? With the end yeah. of those words, when she was like, I'm going to effing kill this chick. You're like, oh my gosh, who does she want to kill and why? And you who have to it? read almost the entire first book to get to that scene. I did it by design because I'm like, I know now with pacing, like this, this book was a little over 50,000 words. So I mm -hmm. accomplished more in this book than I did in the first book of my very first series, which was twice as long. Now, it was a lot of character development and relationship in this, that, and the third, but there's more plot, more action in this book, and it's almost 40,000 words less. But it's about pacing. Like, yeah. one of the things they said, you got to hook your readers in the first chapter, no more than the first two, and every single chapter, every single scene has to be advancing the plot or revealing something about your characters. So there is no unnecessary scene in this book. There's nothing that you could cut out and still tell a complete story. And so that's like the most important criticism or feedback or anything I've received since I started this journey. And I, that is in the back of my mind every single time I sit down to write. That was very true. Cause I, at the end of chapter one, I'm like who, who was she going to kill? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't sure where was Pisces. Is he in jail? Mm -hmm. And you know, as I get continue to read it, oh, he is in jail. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <is> in jail. <laughs> oh, we understand why. And the whole thing, so awesome, and I understood that it really did keep me waiting for the next chapter, wanting to read the next chapter. The pacing was excellent, honestly, and it was very hard to ch to wait until Saturday mm -hmm. to read on to the next one, because if that was, if I took read it as I, you know, mm -hmm. as I get to the end, I was like, but then I got to find out what happened. I would have finished the book in the first 
day, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but um, just because so I like to pace myself with, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know if I, I'm saying reviews, but I kind of just, I read the book, I tell people about the chapter and mm-hmm. um, maybe read a snippet here, a snippet there and say, get the book if you really want to know, you know, yeah, how you feel about the book. Yeah. Um, so um, my next question and we're getting to the an hour, and I, I want to be able to wrap it up so that I can mm-hmm. save what's on IG and then post it to my um, post it to to YouTube. Now, where and or how do you advertise your books? Do you do social media? Do you have a YouTube page? I mean, a channel, or do you go to? Uh, well, maybe not now because we have the whole pandemic and shutdowns and everything is different but do you go to shows how do you how do you advertise your book so my publisher um he'll run sponsored ads through amazon and he has a big um readers group so uh he's got a readers club on facebook and a mailing list Mm -hmm. i have a website and i do my sponsored ads on facebook and instagram um i was never really a social media person. So when I like first signed with Cole and everything, he's like, oh, you have to, you have to have an author's page on Facebook and you have to do this and you have to share these links. And I'm like, I get on <laughs> social media to look at funny videos and get cooking recipes and stay in contact with my family members. And he was like, no, you have to do more. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do more. So I have my uh, author IG page that I made. I have my personal page as well, but I have the author page on Facebook. So that's how I run those sponsored mm-hmm. ads. I have a website that I created, michellelanebooks.com. And then I have a reader's list there. So I send out emails. Um, and then just kind of like looking what the industry is doing, what other authors are doing. So like on the website, I'll post a sneak peek of the books. So I posted that first chapter for Caught Up Love and a Troll One. And then uh, I sent out an email to everyone on the email list about, okay, here's this is coming on this date or this was released today. Here's the link. Um, here's a playlist I made to go along with this. On my author page, you'll actually see visuals for the people in this book because I did visuals. Um, and so and I'll probably send it to you after this because, Thanks, light skin. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to do a light skin. In my mind. But I didn't want it. That's but okay, thing. I'm partial. I don't put I'm too partial. many details in there. Yeah, I don't put too many details in there sometimes because I like the readers to still pick, you know, their visuals. But sometimes I make my own. And I looked at Panamanian men too. And I had a teacher in high school that was Panamanian. And he was very chocolate brown. So, you know, it's it's varying, you know, ends of the spectrum. But um, Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So that's that's what that's I do on social media, okay, so Instagram, light skin. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, Michael J. White isn't that dark. He's <laughs> <laughs> not that dark. Right. <laughs> In my mind, Michael J. Okay. <laughs> we might yeah, have to change him up, but I get it. Oh, I'd love to see it, though. Yeah, I kept mentioning mm-hmm. boys and parents because I was like, no, she's chocolate. She's brown. I want these readers to know, like, there is no colorism in my work. Toy is very chocolate and very beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> yes. Th- thus, Nadine Elise. <laughs> I think that she would, she was a perfect person. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to mm-hmm. If it were to be a movie or a show, she would be perfect. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have anything coming up in the I new do. year that you're doing? Or I do. Tell us I about have- it. Yeah, so it is um, another series. It was supposed to be two books, Cole Loves Three. So I am working on it right now. I've already started the first book. I'm about 20,000 words in, and I hit pause because I need to make sure that I have enough story to tell to make it three parts. I don't like dragging a book out just so I say, all right, everyone, I got a three-part series, go read it. Like, I want to make sure that there's enough story to be told and that it flows and, you know, really Mm -hmm. keeps the readers engaged. So I'm trying to see if it's going to be two or three parts. Enough story to be told and that it flows and, you know, really Mm -hmm. keeps the readers engaged. So I'm trying to see if it's going to be two or three parts. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I have told him I'm going to turn it in the middle of January, so it should be out before the end of January. Um, But it is... 
another, again, very focusing on the relationships, another strong female character who, again, with everybody has a backstory. She and the, it's an enemies to lovers type thing. Um, the, the guy, the main guy, they do not get along in the beginning of the book. Um, they do not get along for a while. But circumstances bring them together and try to tear them apart. And then for him, it's kind of like he he was involved in the life and everything, but he turns over a new leaf when he moves to Atlanta. And there are things about her past, her name's Coco, that now that he cares about her, um, he he if he comes to her rescue, it's going to turn him back to who he was. So that's kind of the conflict. Does he want to go back to who he was to come to her aid? Or is he going to kind of leave her to fix her own mess so that he doesn't run the risk of turning back into the old him. And uh Yeah, look at me, I'm like yeah. really mm-hmm. Coco in a minute. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we got. Look, I'm just gonna be your exclusive reader. Are <laughs> 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 you know, you're gonna interview are uh, you gonna do any other by anybody else's book? Probably. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think about it. So um but I really enjoyed the book. Um now on the back of um, Caught Up Loving the Trill one, in all your books, I'm assuming that it shows where you, they can find you on Facebook and all the social medias, your website, mm-hmm. and any other things that you're going on, any announcements if you're doing book signings or anything. Have you done that? I haven't yet. Um, I missed the the Atlanta kickback this year. But with things starting to open up again, um, I'm looking forward to getting out there. Um, I do have a classmate from school who owns um, a bakery that uh, they do events there sometimes. So I was thinking about maybe mm-hmm. trying to do that. Uh, I do have um, a soror of mine who reads a lot of my books and was interested in, you know, meeting up for a discussion or a signing. So I definitely want to do something. I just... Life has been so crazy. Uh, 2020 was crazy. 2021 was even crazier. So uh, looking forward to yeah. getting some of that, something going on in 2022. Please add me to the email list because I'd like to be there. I, I, I don't got nothing else to do but read books and yeah. <laughs> go to work Monday through Friday and do this. <laughs> do my podcast. <laughs> um, so I mean, that is concludes my questions. I noticed that there was a, a person that said that Saint, he was, he was about that life. Yes, well, duh, he is the saint. He, I mean, he's saint. Yeah. That, that's and he that? even, Hassan. Yeah. Hassan. <laughs> but yeah. this person By must the, have already you read your four. other books. <laughs> huh? Yeah, by the time you get to book four, we'll really see. We think Saint's about that life right now. Oh, we will see. It's like, ooh, huh. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can, I don't know. I mean, if I was toy, it'd be like, uh, I used to love Tyson. I don't know, but Saint, though. But Saint, though. Yeah. Saint, though. <laughs> but Saint, though. <laughs> so, um, thank you for doing this interview with me. I really, really appreciate it. You mm-hmm. coming on here. Um, I'm going to continue on to... Reading where the other book go? Caught up lover trail one day. <laughs> Girl, I went through hell and high water to get this one. I ordered it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. They didn't deliver it on time. I had to ask them to redo it again. Send it to me again. They sent it to an old address. Next time, go to my website. Okay. Deal. I, I ship the books from my website. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'll do because Amazon, but I end up getting it because the first yeah. one that was supposed to arrive, arrived. Awesome. So um, definitely, I'll definitely go to your website. Last time, I was like, it's Amazon. It's perfect. Amazon is everything. Mm-hmm. So um, again, I enjoy doing this. Um, I I may have to call on you once I finish this one. It's like, yep. girl, but yeah. joy. It, might be, it won't be any questions. We're just going to be talking about, girl, why? Why? <laughs> yeah. Just, just. I already gave you a heads up. I am good at the cliffhanger. So, oh, I love I'm it though because it know. keeps me reading. 
<laughs> and I started doing this because I wanted to just get back to to reading books and didn't share any because I'm opinionated and I'm like, girl, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. I try to be entertaining on here, especially with my cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But thank you again so much for doing it. I am so thankful that you... I met you before I got your book, though. Really? Okay. At your mom's house. Okay. Yeah, that was me. I think I did. But I just... We didn't go into conversations and I wasn't doing none of this. <laughs> but it was a joy of me seeing you again and meeting you and interviewing. And thank you. Thank you so much for the first book. Yeah. And thank you for all the information. Because I'm right. You saw me taking notes. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, sir, one day I'm going to write a book too. <laughs> all right. All right. I don't know if it's going to be fiction or nonfiction, but mm-hmm. I'm going to write a book. That's on my, that's on my, um, on my, what do you call it, the vision board. Write a book. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. You have a wonderful me. evening. Oh, you too. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for agreeing to this interview. I will talk to you later. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And again, remember to tell me about what's going on because I, I'll show up like girl, yes, her. Get the book. <laughs> you want the book? <laughs> I got the book. Early <laughs> <Surely> will. <laughs> All right. You have a good one. You too. All right. Bye. Thank you all for um, showing up. And that concludes Caught Up Loving a Trill One. Thank you all the ones that tuned in to the live. And we will see you, girl, after talking to her, maybe tomorrow. So I'll talk to you all tomorrow, uh, maybe tomorrow, but definitely on Monday for the morning chat, where I'll tell you how this interview went. And... Maybe a little bit of news on what's going on. Maybe talk about the tornado. Maybe talk about Jesse Smollett guilty charge. Hmm. Well, we'll talk to you later. Y'all have a good one, y'all. 